Okay, in this session we're going to look at portraiture, uh, more specifically proportions of the face. Now sometimes we can be intimidated by trying to draw a whole face, but let's break it down into sections. The first thing to look at is the top of the face, so I'm going to draw half a circle, or half a football as I sometimes call it in class. The other thing to remember is draw very lightly. The lighter you press, the more easy it is to correct. I'm pressing hard in this drawing so that you can see it on the screen. So once you've done your half a football or half a circle, you can draw a straight line coming down from both those points. And then a curve. Have the curve coming down. Don't quite meet it. We don't want a balloon. And then a straight line at the bottom. Okay, so let's break that down again. I'll do a little sketch by the side for you now. Half a football. That's easy enough to draw. A straight line. You can all draw a straight line. And then a curve. Slightly more tricky, but not the hardest thing in the world. And then a little straight line at the bottom. And that gives you the sort of egg shape that we're going to use for this generic face. By generic, I'm really just saying the average face. Everybody's face looks different, and we will, as you get more complicated drawn up a real person, you'll change those factors. But for now, this is the basics of how to draw portrait. The next thing is a face is generally symmetrical. So let's put a little mirror line down the centre of the picture so we can create that symmetry. It's going to be an eye on one side, an eye on the other. The next thing to look at, probably the most important thing on drawing the face, is getting where the eyes are. And they are exactly halfway down the head. Don't just draw it. Make a guess, first of all, and then measure it. You can do this by placing your finger and thumb there, locking it in position and moving it. You can then see that you haven't quite, haven't quite gone halfway. So I'll try it again. Lock from position, move that down. I'm still off, but I'm not far. So probably half a centimeter is going to do it. So at that point, I can make a little guess. Just do it below, just below the line I want it to. Okay, halfway down. A little note on the side there to, to help you out and remind you of this. Next thing is where the nose goes. And it's going to be halfway between the eyes and the chin. So again, I'll make a little guess. I'm going to use my thumb and my finger, lock it in position, and measure it down. No, I'm off a little bit again. Move it down and measure again. Do this still when you're happy. And then draw a faint line across. And again then, from the nose to the chin, I'm going to do a guideline for the mouth. Now you'll see later, this isn't exactly where the mouth is going to go. This is just about where I want it to be. So now I've got the nose halfway between the eyes and the chin, so it's a quarter of the way down the face. And then with the mouth, it's halfway between the nose and the chin, so it's an eighth of the way down the face. The next section is the most uh, difficult to do, but it's also uh, the one that's probably the most, one of the most important. And that's position in the eyes. Now I like to do this by making a little dot where I think the eyes should start and end. The most important calculation is the fact that the gap between your eyes is also the same size as the eye. This becomes more important as we continue the drawing. So when you position the eye, you want to make sure that from the edge of your head to where the eye starts is also a reasonable size. You don't want it too small and you don't want it too big. But as you move along, you measure your eye, size your eye, the gap must be the same size as that eye, and the next eye must be the same size. Now the tricky part is that you've got to then make sure the gap on either side of your eyes are the same distance as well. So it's all about symmetry really again. You want the gap from the edge of your face to where your eye starts to be the same on the opposite side. And then we're going to draw the eye. So a simple way of looking at this is just draw a bridge from one dot to the other and then draw the reflection in the water. Don't worry if it's not moving. Draw a bridge and then reflection. Now the face is symmetrical, but it's not perfectly symmetrical, so don't get too hung up about them being perfect on each side. So let's go over that again. You've got your little dots between the sides to show the size of the eye. Draw the bridge and the reflection. Just join them up. Again, don't worry if they're not perfect. I press lightly. Do you remember, I'm pressing hard so that you can see. You press lightly so you can repair it at any time. Now here's the real reason why the gap between your eyes needs to be the same size as an eye. It's because the nose is the same size as an eye. Now I know that seems really odd, and when you draw on it, it's going to look strange. But believe me, it's right. And by the time we finish the drawing, it will look great. 
I'm going to show you stage by stage how to draw it. First stage, I draw a circle, leaving a gap either side of the circle, and it's the bottom of the circle skimming the bottom line, the bottom guideline. Then I draw a circle on the side, also skimming the line on the outside, and another circle on the opposite side. It kind of looks like a monkey's head. So that's stage two. So again, repeat, drawing a very faint circle in the middle, a smaller circle on the other side skimming the outside lines. This is as we start to draw the detail on the nose now. I'm pressing a little bit harder to outline the actual shape of the nose that I want, which is just around the nostrils, around the bottom of the nose, and around the other nostril. So very faintly draw that circle, remember? Faint circles on the side from the nostrils. Press a little bit harder on the outside there and around to get the shape of the nose, and just add detail. Little nostrils curving in. Let's see what it looks like on the main portrait in the middle now. So, I've got my guidelines, I'm going to draw a circle around skimming the bottom line. Draw a small faint circle on each side, and I'm just going to press a little harder to show the actual nose shape that I want. The rest of it can be rubbed out. And I'm adding a little nostril detail there, a little nostril detail there, and now the bridge of the nose. This is where you'll, you know, if you wear glasses or sunglasses, this is where they, they fit. Now don't do the common mistake of joining that bridge of the nose to your nose. There's no real line on your face, it's just all shape and shadow, and we'll cover that with tone later. So the next thing is the mouth, and that's a really great tip. If you draw a line straight down from the centre of your eyes, right down to the line we've drawn where the mouth is, that's going to give you the size of the mouth. I know, like the nose, it looks ridiculously large, but I promise you, by the time we finish this, you'll realise why it works. So again, I'm going to draw my little stitch by stage. A ladder on the side here to show you how it's done. So notice one thing. I'm not starting on that line. Just above that line, draw a little mark on one side, a little mark on the other, and I'm going to join them up. And as I go across about halfway along, I'll draw a little bump in my line. That bump will go in the same place as the bump on my nose. There we go, across. Where the bump on the nose is, I'm going to give a little bump mark across there. So, again, here again, draw a line across, a bump in the middle, and line there. And I'm going to curve line for the bottom of the lip. I'm just going to draw it just below the line. Just skimming below that line, not too much. Don't want the lips too big or too small. Again, draw again, line across, little bump in the middle, curve the line down. And then for the top of the draw a line diagonally gone up, a little bump in the middle, and then back down. Now, here's the thing. All lips are different, all faces are different. So you can have thinner lips or bigger lips, but you decide. In this one, I'm making the lips slightly thinner, so I'm dragging the line across. But you decide how big or small the lips are going to be, how thin or thick. Next thing is the neck. If I draw a line down from the edge of my eye and I carry it out, that's roughly where my neck's going to be. Just guide the line down. You don't have to draw it on the face because you're going to have to rub it out later. But guide it around, and then as soon as you get to where the chin is, draw it out. Your shoulders will probably go off your drawing page, so don't worry too much about those. And don't try and fit them on to an A4 piece of paper if your head's covering most of it. Now, the ears, then, kind of my favourite things to draw because they look ridiculous again. On the line for your eye, draw an N. And then carry on the line from your nose and draw a U. And draw a line in. Just narrow in slightly and it looks like a hot dog sausage stapled to the side of your head. But don't worry, we'll get it looking a bit better than that now. So the N at the top, the U at the bottom and a little curved line joining them up. I want to make them look a little bit more like an, a U so I'm going to draw a little curved N at the top, a little sort of curved Z shape there, an N shape there, a little curved S there and a little dot in there. And suddenly it kind of looks like the the twists and turns inside you. Let's go through it again. A little N on the line that guides your eyes. And if you take the line along for your nose, a little U shape there. And a curved line in. A little N shape there. And on one side, a little curvy Z on the other, curvy S. Just give it balance. Now, if you look at the eyebrows. Don't try and draw them on all at once, because getting the balance on the other side is quite difficult. What I like to do is draw one hair at a time, because that's how your eyebrows are. They're one hair at a time. 
just throw one of them. You can also add more later, but it's easier to kind of get a balance if you are drawing one. Because you can keep looking backwards and forwards to see, do I need to add more to that one? And if you do too much in the other, you can always go back to the other one. But the key rule is your faces are quite symmetrical, but not perfectly symmetrical. So don't get too hung up on that. The next part is probably my favorite little trick on the picture. And it's drawn the eyelid and tear duct. As you can see, I've gone from one side of the eye across, down to the other side, and then just turned back on myself. And it creates a really good eyelid and tear duct. And then I'm going to draw a circle, just grazing across the bottom, and then the rest of the circle is kind of hidden behind my eyelid. And that's the iris, the coloured part of your eye. You can see, the one grazes the bottom, the bottom and the rest of the circle is hidden behind the eyelid. And I'm going to draw the pupil, which I like to draw as a sort of little black crescent shape or C shape. It gives the illusion there's a dot of light in your eye to give it some life. It's a cheap trick, but it kind of works. So let's go for this again. Now from the other eye, it's from the opposite side. So from the outer eye, across, the inner eye, curve back just a little bit, and then draw that circle for the iris, the coloured part of your eye, skimming the bottom and up, and part of it hidden behind the eyelid. A little C shape for the eye, and suddenly you've got a little bit more life in this, uh, this person's face. I'm going to draw some eyelashes. Please don't try and draw every eyelash on there. Just darken the edge of the bottom and do a few little lines out. Otherwise it looks like a spider's attached picture. Now, even on someone who hasn't got much hair, there's a hairline. There's sort of dots along the top like that. So now shortening the forehead so it doesn't look quite as bad. But if you want to put a fringe on, you can just draw a little few lines, draw a short fringe to indicate that it's there. Maybe you want to draw a slightly bigger fringe. Go across the face. And even long hair. If you want to draw a quiff or hair curve back, then you just guide in showing the line where the actual hairline would be. And drawing in the lines indicate the way the hair's curving the way. Not easy, but over time, a little practice will get it. So, if you want to draw a bun on top of the head, there you go, or a bobble or a ponytail swishing head. Experiment with this and have fun. So, here you have the basics of how to draw a face. We'll come back and look at tone another time. But this gives you a good indication to draw a good face every time. And remember, the top tip for drawing anything is press lightly. So, enjoy your drawing and good luck.